Hi guys, it is me and I'm here to make a video about how to gather keywords to advertise your book when you are advertising on Amazon. Um, and it's funny, this is a part of the process I feel gets glossed over an awful lot. Um, and that's because there are various different methodologies, there are various different tools you can use and uh, it's also incredibly laborious, time consuming and not very sexy or exciting but it is vitally important. So the place to start off is probably where your book is. So this is the product page for my book. As you can see, I'm up to nine ratings now. It is very humbling having to start again from scratch as an author, rather than having you know thousands of subscribers to, to support you and give you reviews and, and having a, an easy to break into, well, a relatively easy to break into a category like romance as opposed to thrillers. So yeah, it's a little humbling, but my score point is slowly climbing up there and I am hopeful that, uh, if nothing else, if I can get this book into the hands of some people who want to read it, maybe they'll leave some reviews, maybe things will start shifting. Um, in my last video, I explained how keywords work. So, your book, you advertise using keywords just like Google AdWords and uh, it's all linked to what people are searching for and what product pages they end up on. Um, with a book that I've uh, sold tons of copies of, normally I would scroll all the way down, all the way down to this beautiful section called uh, Also Bought. But because this book has sold like two copies, um, actually I think, yeah, it's uh, there's only one other book here, which is my other book that I've already published. So I'm going to have to do what uh, a lot of authors just starting out have to do, and that is start completely from scratch. So where do I even begin? Well. Let's go to the homepage of Amazon. I want to get people from here to my book page. Why would anybody want to read this book? Very, very important question, this one. Well, it's a sea adventure. Uh, it was inspired by Clive Cussler um, and Wilbur Smith and those high adventure authors. Uh, it's got a really strong romantic subplot. It's got this historical boat in there. So, you know, I, I think there are a, there is an audience for this book. And I mentioned I was inspired a lot by Clive Cussler when I wrote it. So we'll start off with Clive Cussler. Do you see all of these things down here? These are all suggestions uh, for such terms because people have actually been looking these up, like Clive Cussler, Oregon Files. His last book, the 15th book in the Oregon Files, was published uh, earlier this year. Dirk Pitt books, new releases 2021, Marauder, Kindle books. So these are all keywords you can start off with. Where do you put your keywords you can start off with? Well, I normally start off with something very unsexy, which is an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and I will start off at the very beginning uh, by going to a book or the, yep, let's go to the most recent Clive Cussler book. Oh, this is the series that we've got here. Sorry, I was uh, getting a bit distracted then. Um, yeah, so these are all Clive Cussler books, and these are all books that we can use as search terms. So what you want to do is really, really boring stuff. And sometimes I do it uh, with my notepad as well. So I'll put Golden Buddha, it's the name of a book. Oregon Files is the name of a series. Uh, and maybe I'll do Oregon Files book, and then maybe I'll do Oregon Files, The Oregon Files, and then maybe Oregon Files. Um, and do that for every book in the series. You can probably tell that if you are gonna do what I'm doing here, which is copying and pasting, and uh, then tidying up what these things are, so I'm using the, the name of the co-author here as another keyword, uh, it's time consuming. So I will say there are, the, the trick to gathering these keywords is to, to do stuff that saves you time. So instead of manually dragging each one of these things out and at a time and fixing it and things like that, I tend to follow a different approach. So let's go back to the most recent book in the, the series, Marauder. This is probably the most relevant to people right now who are looking at these things because the, the Oregon Files dates way back. So if I started a book one in the series, that might actually uh, be out of date in terms of uh, all the different connections it has. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of this book page and you will find customers who viewed this item also viewed eight pages of these things. These are all generated by Amazon's algorithm. 
so they are actually useful information. Whoever bought this book, Marauder, also bought books from this ribbon of content. When it says viewed, I think that's because on the paperback. Yeah, if you ever see something just viewed rather than uh, bought, it's probably because you're on one of the uh, the actual physical versions. So always switch to the Kindle version. Scroll down. Da, 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 da. And what do you have there? Yeah, look at this. Now you've got customers who bought this item also bought, and you've got 14 pages of ribbons. You've got more items to explore. I'm not quite sure. I've never seen this one before, actually. Normally you have customers who viewed this item also viewed. But these all look pretty relevant. What do you do with these? Well, you could very slowly do what I was doing before, copy and paste, and then you go to your notepad and you put it in there. Final option. The Oregon Files, I don't tend to bother with the book number. Clive Castler, Clive Castler, and then you can already see that, you know, by doing that, you've got stuff like the, the price in the Kindle edition. These aren't relevant keywords. And also we've got Clive Castler three times here. Uh, and that's quite annoying as well to have to then go and get rid of all of the duplicates. So this is why I love my friend Excel. And here is a trick uh, that I'm gonna teach you. What I do, uh, when I want to generate a lot of keywords and do it fairly quickly, is I'll go to uh, a good sort of vein of keywords. Vein like uh, when you're mining for gold, there's normally like a vein of gold. This is a vein of pure gold here. So I'm going to copy and paste all of these, and then I'm going to go into Excel. Then I'm going to right click, and I'm going to paste just the, the text values. So it gets rid of all the pictures, gets rid of all the formatting, everything like that. That's fine. Then I'm going to copy it again, move over to a different box and click this button called transpose. What this does is it then puts all of the stuff in a straight line in a row rather than up and down in a column. Why is that? Well, I'll show you. And then final thing, I'm gonna delete the original stuff. So I'm gonna start building a list of keywords from block A in Excel. And I've grabbed all of these, then I just click this button here this button here. They remain selected, and then I can copy them again. I'm using Control-C rather than the mouse. Once again, paste them right here, right click. Oh, what's going on here? Right click, paste, and then grab all of these, copy them a second time, and then transpose them here. Now what I'm doing is I'm transposing it all in the same row, uh, same column here. So that means a lot of the information is gonna line up as we go from page to page. And this starts to make sense as we go through. Let's go to page three of these. Control C, back here again. Paste, boom. Control C, back here. Transpose, boom. Okay. And we are gonna do that for a while. In fact, if you want, I am going to pause this video now and I will come back uh, and whiz through all of the stuff once I've actually gathered quite a lot of things. But all I'm gonna be doing is exactly what you see here. I go to the also bought section of this book and I scroll through and I scrape all of this information by copying it then I paste it into Excel as just the values. Then I transpose it into a row. And I'm going to continue doing that for all 14 of them. So I will see you in a moment. Okay, so we are back and I'm just doing the final page of all supports. There we go. No one keeps coming up that error message. So uh, we have done all of the all supports for Marauder. That's 14 pages of them. And I have transpose them into this big long line here in Excel. What do we do from this point on? Well, first of all, you shouldn't have stopped at just one book. The secret to successful site, uh, advertising on Amazon is to have gazillions of keywords. Why? Because you wanna have your bid for each keyword as low as possible. So you have the maximum chance of making a profit uh, depending on how many clicks it takes to sell your book. Um, so, your chances of having impressions, as in your ad winning at that particular bid to be presented, is gonna be a lot lower if you have a low bid. However, 
you will always sometimes get your ad shown. And the more keywords you have, just from numbers game, the more times you are likely to have your book actually shown. So if you have a thousand keywords at 15 cents each and you get 150 impressions a day, which is nothing, that sucks. But if you have 10,000 keywords, then instead of 150 impressions, you're getting 1500 impressions. If you have 100,000 keywords, then obviously you're getting 15,000 impressions. It's at some point, obviously, there's going to be diminishing return to it. But having a ton of keywords is a really, 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 really uh, fundamental part of uh, doing this right. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing right now. I've got all of these rows and rows here. Um, tons of just random information. I'm going to try and pull some stuff out of it. If I was doing this on my own and I wasn't making a video at the same time, I would go through every single Clive Cussler book and stack all of the also boughts down and down and down and down. If you consider there are probably 15 pages of them on all 15 books in the Oregon Files series, that is a lot of books and keywords to scrape. Obviously, there are going to be a ton of duplicates, but I, I will show you how we're going to deal with that. But for the first thing, all you need to do is just gather as much of this information as possible. Once you have, what do you do? Well, let's start clearing up. The reason I have put all of these things in uh, the same column is that way a lot of the information lines up. So we know that the this bit that says customers who bought is useless, page is useless, previous thing is useless. So we can up select all of these. I don't know what's and delete them. Then these three are all rows of useful keywords. They're not useful yet. You can see you've got the name of the books and you've got the authors of the books. So these we want to keep. Um, it's weird that one says Clive Cussler, Clive Cussler. Anyway, here, then again, we get to these bits of information which are all useless, kind of, except you'll see this one here, Arctic Drift, because it doesn't yet have a, a rating, um, it's missing one field, so it all gets drifted over here. So what happens if you find yourself in that situation is you insert a cell and you shift cells to the right and then it corrects it. And it's the same thing here up here because this is the number one bestseller. This boots it slightly to the right. So you go delete, shift cells left, and then you again start seeing everything line up, which is nice. Nice. Get rid of all these, get rid of these. What I will then do is take these three items of relevant stuff, put them here and they line up. So now we are kind of creating um, three columns of potential keywords by dragging them from the other one. So I'll normally go over here. Uh, 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 I don't know why this is being so annoying. But, uh, and I'll fix any of the ones here. So on this cell, we want to insert, shift cells to the right, bonk. This one, it looks like we want to insert, shift cells to the right. Okay, so all of that stuff there is now useless. All of this stuff here is useful. And we bring it over here, paste it, take it back. Okay, so, uh, all this stuff can go away. We can fix this one. Insert, shift cells to the right. Insert, shift cells to the right. So, yeah, you can see that it's kind of a laborious, time consuming process. And we haven't even got started yet. But by doing this, you can see that we were automatically, you know, able to gather a lot of information a lot more quickly than we would otherwise. Um, now, I'm going to get to a tool you can use to help with this in a moment, but this is the way I do it. The reason I love the also bought section so much is because it is a real tangible, factual link between uh, whatever kind of book you think is a good model to advertise your book with and uh, the people who might actually like to read that. So, you know, a lot of these books in the also bought section are other. Um, Clive Custer books because he was incredibly prodigious, but not all of them are. And so you are finding new authors that you might not have considered, might not have heard of, uh, who you can use to reach out and hopefully steal some of their audience. Not steal, but right. I'm going to 
carry on doing this until, oh, these two here. Delete, shift cells left, it's really annoying. Tell you what though, it's a great skill, Excel, to learn. So I'm gonna carry on doing that and um, going through, you can see in a minute, I've got all of these ones to go. So uh, you disappear off for a second and I will rejoin you shortly once I have assembled all of that information. Okay, so I'm back and I have done exactly what I said. I've transferred all of those keywords that were in these rows into columns. And by using this method, it was very easy to create three columns worth of keywords. Scroll down. So from one book, you can see we gathered 204 rows of keywords. And then we get these ones as well. Scroll down here. Place them, boom. And what do we have? We have to delete these ones once we've copied and pasted them. So we have, wow, look at all these keywords. Look at all these chickens. We have here uh, 612, which is quite a lot. Well, it's not really, because if we go here to the L thing and we click on data and then we click remove duplicates, what happens? Nothing apparently. Oh, yep, it removed all the duplicates and now that has limited down to 208. <sighs> 208 separate individual keywords. Well, not quite because um, what we can do here is now start splitting them into stuff that's useful because no one is going to be looking at final option, the Oregon Files book 14. So we have to start getting clever with it using text to columns function. So what we do here is we click on delimited, which means that we're gonna break this one column into multiple columns based on characters in it. And I undo the tab, click on other, and we start off with, for me, it is always the closing parenthesis. Click next, finish, and then in row M, everything that went beyond one of these closing parentheses will be there. Um, which is actually nothing, which isn't particularly surprising. Then we click on this again and do, let's see, text columns, delimited, but instead of the closing parenthesis, we'll have the opening parenthesis. Finish, boom, you can see now that the name of the book has been separated from the name of the book series. And all of these are potential keywords. So that's 145 potential keywords. Now, of course, oh, even more than that. The thing is there are gonna be duplicates again because uh, I don't like using like book 14, book 15. So we're gonna have an awful lot of these are duplicates, but don't worry, I'll show you how we get rid of those next. Okay, then click here, boom. Uh, we have this list. Another thing that I like to do is separate the book from uh, any sort of subtitle to the book. So the Sentinel, colon, a Jack Reacher novel. What we want to do is separate that into two columns using the colon. There is a problem though, because it goes colon, space, a Jack Reacher novel. And so if we do this normally, so we'll go text columns, delimited, next, and we'll use a colon. Oh. and then finish you can see this looks great except now there is a space here and that's annoying and we don't want that so what i do is i will select the whole column and then i'll go to home then i'll go to find and select replace and i will find every colon with a space after it and replace it with just a colon with no space after it Place all, boom. Then you can see, gets rid of that space. So then we can go back to data, we can go back to text to columns, we can go to delimited, we can use a colon, finish, boom, and we get all of these ones. And if we sort them by just that particular column, you can see that we've got all of these other things. Uh, and a lot of these are useless, like a novel. It's one of my pet peeves is people who will have the name in their book and then write a novel. Well, of course it's a novel. What else is it gonna be, a banana? So yeah, a 
thriller is slightly better because at least that explains what it is but this stuff here if you are writing then these are really really useful a novel from the numa files a novel of the battle of midway that's actually a coastal caribbean adventure these are actually useful the subtitles of your book should always explain what the book is so it does exactly what it says on the tin right scroll in there Make sure we delete any duplicates. I saw oh, that novel thing hanging out there. Don't know quite how it got there. We got rid of these. And then what do we have? Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. We are starting to get quite a nice list of keywords, except some of them with bonus novel, come and get us, that's useful. Except come and get us is the name of novel. So that is actually useful. Uh, we have to start looking through these things and start fixing them. Uh, at this point, we have 399 keywords, except we don't. Click on remove duplicates. Okay. And it turns out we actually only have 362. And scrolling through, you can start looking at them. One of the annoying things is that some of them uh, will be duplicates, except Excel won't recognize them as duplicates. Because if you see the apostrophe we have here is a different version of the apostrophe here. So uh, Excel thinks these are separate fields when actually they're not go through we can scroll through and you know the thriller and a novel that's not useful it says novel six a jack reacher novel that's not quite so useful a detective william warwick novel that's fine uh the oregon files they'll often cut off some of these things um the thing that really gets me though is where it says book 18 or book 24 or something like that because you know this it's not useful to have that as a keyword the empire core on the Empire Core book, that's useful. For it says book 18, book whatever, it's not so useful. So how do we fix that? Well, we do something bloody clever. Uh, and I don't mind saying that it is clever. We go to replace and we type in book. And then we put something that would not appear anywhere else, like a star uh, or a hashtag. That's a good one, hashtag. Replace all, boom, close. And then we go back to data and we do text to columns, delimit it again. And this time we'll use whatever we replaced book with, hashtag, finish. And then what you have here are all the numbers of the books. Continue the current selection. Oh. Yeah, well, they're there. And uh, it cleans up all of these. So these are starting to get to a point where you can actually Oh, here are all the things there. You can actually start using these as keywords. A couple of extra things to think about though as we scroll through. Sometimes um, you will see some goofy stuff going on. Uh, we Let's see, the 10 greatest conspiracies of all time. That's probably not a good keyword. I don't know, maybe it is. The tombs, the cutthroat going through. Um, there was one thing I saw earlier where Clive Cussler... Here we go, Clive Cussler, Clive Cussler. So what you have to do is actually sort of go through and manually fix some of those. And scroll through again, and see if there are any more goofy things that are occurring. Uh, again, we've got a random duplicate here. Let's see, Sam and Remy Fargo Adventure, The Oregon Files, another duplicate here. The Numa Files, Numa Files Series, that's all good. Numa Files Series, that is a duplicate. Um, yeah. And I think if we click on remove duplicates, oh no, it does get rid of some of them. That's great. So you can go through. It's these things that tend to be annoying, these dot, dot, dots. Um, and at this point, you have to start sort of going in and thinking, okay, maybe I'll just manually go through and tidy them up. So novel six, we don't really need that. Don't need a novel. A novel of suspense. Eh, I maybe keep that in. We don't need a thriller. That's far too generic. The Dragonheart Legacy. Uh, the Violent Salt that changed the prison. These things. These things. I think you know they're not doing any harm. But I'm going to get rid of this comma here. Right. And then once you've sorted that all out, I like to organise them alphabetically because that makes it really easy to go through and see. Yep. Duplicate. Boom. Boom, boom. This one with three dots, we can get rid of the three dots, but we can still keep it. What I sometimes do is get rid of the A, Sam and Remy Fargo. Let's go through, see anything else, an FBI thriller, and it's worth keeping. 
Um, look through to see if there are any more duplicates. It doesn't look like it. Oh, Gabriel Allen series. Jack Frost, Jack Ryan, Jack Ryan of three dots. We can get with him. Anything else? Crazy Horse, Locked On, Lost City. Yep, Lost City we've got twice. Garvey. But in general, these have turned out pretty clean. Um, and right down to the bottom. Excellent. So you have got yourself a bunch of keywords. How many? 284. And so that's, you know, given the amount of work that I had to do to get that, and given that, you know, the bare minimum number of keywords you want is probably about a thousand, you can see this is a time consuming manual process. Um, but it does work. So these are the keywords that I'm starting off with here, getting rid of everything that is not a keyword. And um, I will go back and we can start looking at other places that we might be able to find keywords because you want as many as possible. So I would, if I had all the time in the world, go through all of the Clive Custer books and I would uh, grab all of the also boughts from them because the also boughts are massively important. And one thing it is worth remembering is never scrape anything from products related to this item because they are paying to advertise uh, their book on this thing. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're piggybacking of their advertising, which I personally don't think is a very effective thing. You only ever want to, to drag from uh, the customers who viewed this item also viewed or customers who bought this item also bought. For a book that you're just starting out, haven't sold that many copies, I uh, don't have much of a footprint on there, that's obviously impossible, that's why I was going straight to Clive Custler, but another place you can go to are the categories. Uh, so this is Sea Adventures Fiction. Right click, open up in new window, and we go through to the best sellers in Sea Adventures Fiction. We can look through and see all of the different books that are here. Um, this can be a very, very effective place for finding a book uh, a list of books and a list of uh, keywords that you can use to promote your book. But it's not always the way. Uh, because as you can see, the Seahorse Cottage is probably not an appropriate uh, match for my book High Point, uh, even though it is classified as a sea adventure. Going through, they've got better ones, Wild Season. I think that one looks good. These look a bit more sort of military than mine, but I still think that's good. So there are plenty of uh, books here that are really, really good to go and steal. But Hit and Run, a thrilling novel of romance. That's probably not uh, a good one. The Cain Mutiny, it's more historical than than I might like. So um, are these ones Wallace and Keith, they're very, very into the whole Clive Castle thing. That's a good um, keyword to have. So you have to start using some executive function to decide which books are worth uh, taking as keywords and which ones aren't. And then what you have to do is do the same thing of finding them, scraping them, pasting them into Excel and grabbing those. It's really, really annoying and time consuming, uh, but there are options that you can use to streamline this. I mean, you can use your own, like I've uh, used Excel to, to really cut a lot of the corners from, from having to do this, uh, but there are also tools you can get. One of the most famous tools that a lot of people swear by is this thing called Publisher Rocket formerly KDP Rocket. This is uh, from Kindlepreneur, I think, uh, run by a guy called Dave, who is a super, super nice guy, by the way. Also, um, I've always been a bit on the fence with Publisher Rocket, but I will say their customer service is top notch. I bought this, didn't like it, asked for a refund, I got the refund back the same day. I then bought it again um, and have used it on and off and whenever I ran into a problem, reached out and to the, the Kindlepreneur people, to the uh, Publisher Rocket team, and they were always able to help me out. What is Publisher Rocket? Well, Publisher Rocket basically is an, an application, a program that does all of the stuff I just showed you then for you, in theory. If you go to AMS Keyword Search, it asks you to look up uh, a keyword. So we could look up Clive Cussler. And then you can look up book or just the ebook. We're going to look up book and I'll explain why in a second. And then go get them, Rocket. And what this does is goes to Amazon and it scrapes all of the different keywords related to whatever you looked in. 
So, and then it even classifies them. So these books here, at the beginning of this video, I showed that uh, Amazon sort of pre-filled the search boxes. It steals all of those suggestions from the API, which is great. And then as you scroll down further, you can see it includes all of the different books and uh, all the different book titles, the author, what is really clever. And this is why I paid full price for Publisher Rocket and I do use it, is it pulls the ASIN and the ISBN. So if it is a physical book, it's got an ISBN like this. And if it is an ebook, it's got an ASIN like this. Now, these are useful because if you want your book to be featured on a particular product page, like, oh, let's say Marauder, we want our book to be featured here in products related to this item, you can use the ASIN of the book as a keyword, and that signals to Amazon that you want your ad to appear here on the product page. So it is really, really useful to have the ASINs and the ISBNs, and it is a pain in the backside to get them individually for each book. Uh, I haven't found a way that does that really easily. I know there are some Google add-ons and plugins that you can get, but hands down, Publisher Rocket is the, the best way to do this. So you do that, you click export, it creates a lovely little, um, it creates a lovely little Excel spreadsheet for you, which I will open up now. Here we go. So this is the Excel spreadsheet that opens up and it's got all the names of the authors of the book here and things like that. So you can scroll down. This is, this is great. Um, and you can use these as keywords. So where is our list of keywords that we're assembling here? Uh, we could scroll down to the bottom here and add these, boom. And then you can go back to this report that it goes and see it's got uh, stuff that it pulls from the also bought section and all sorts of interesting things. Grab that and click paste. And then you can also go through to these things, which are the ASINs and the ISBNs. And when we paste them here, boom, there they all are. So that is great. That generated for us almost instantly. Uh, let's see how many. It generated 317 keywords. Fantastic. But then again, how useful are these? I don't like having the book one in there. Um, you go through you can see there are an awful lot of duplicates here so we have to do the same thing remove duplicates uh, and at this point then you start to realize that uh, even this wonderful tool it doesn't take all of the hard work out of it um, how many are we left with so we're left with 223 individual keywords which I will admit is uh, is higher than average because Clive Cussler is such a prolific author but um, if you are chasing after an author, this can be a very, very effective way of going to them, grabbing all their books, all their ASINs and everything like that in one go. So, yeah, I haven't always loved Publisher Rocket, but uh, in terms of this, I, I think it's worth definitely worth the price of purchase. Where it does fall flat, however, if we go back to Amazon and we look up... I write uh, romance novels in my spare time, and so there are some. Oh, Let's see, Eden Rose is uh, here. We go. Eden Rose is the author of uh, some fantastic biker novels that are really, really good matches for my romance novels. Um, but if we type in new search, Eden Rose, go get them, Rocket. Rocket will whiz through and grab them all and then you start to scroll through here and then you wonder oh quite how relevant these are the Husqvarna Viking Eden Rose 250c sewing machine color comb bound copy reprint of the user guide manual hmm Jonathan Fluke's Lake Eden cookbook hmm uh, crystals for beginners through the doors of perception to heaven via the roseway meditation what I'm trying to say is because this is a program it doesn't have a human brain behind it. 
uh, it will scrape things without putting any executive decision making process into scraping things. So therefore, sometimes it will come up with really goofy, useless results, which I find you don't get when you do it manually and you go through and you, you grab things from the also bought section and stuff like that. So it is most definitely uh, a tool that you want to use judiciously and you want to put some some thought behind which of the keywords it comes up with uh, are useful to you and which ones aren't and there are a great many different tricks and tips you can use so let's go to here we'll go to Eden Rose click on her author title and go go through to her every single author has their own kind of code so if we do a new search and we put in the code for her author page and then go and get it uh, you'll find that the results tend to be a lot better uh, so that's just one of the tricks you can do but again um, it, it's it's very far from perfect but nothing is perfect and the thing is you have this really difficult balance to get through uh, with the time and effort you put into gathering these keywords and how effective these keywords end up actually being so yeah publisher rocket is very useful depending on what you want to do in terms of grabbing all the books and ASNs from another author uh, but I prefer to do the also boards and stuff like that manually. Uh, once you have that done though, and you can go through and do the same to Tom Clancy and Wilbur Smith and stuff like that, you will eventually end up with hopefully a thousand different individual keywords. And from there, it is time to start building a campaign around that. What do I mean by that? Well, I will show you, but uh, remember, the more keywords, the better, always. And the more obscure keywords, the better, always. So, for example, um, Clive Cussler, let's see, go back to Clive Cussler, wonderful author, uh, great books down here. What you can do is scroll down to the also bought section and then shoot off completely. Tom Clancy's Shadow of the Dragon is a book written in the world that Tom Clancy uh, created, a fantastic author, uh, another great match for sort of my kind of book, written by a guy called Mark Cameron. So let's go to Mark Cameron's product page. You can see all of these books here. Uh, these are all books that might not necessarily turn up in a search for Tom Clancy. He's potentially not as, uh, as famous as Tom Clancy, so people aren't bidding on his keywords. So it's worth going through and grabbing the book titles and everything like that of these books. You can use Kindle Rocket to do that. Sorry, Publisher Rocket. So we'll go to Publisher Rocket and we'll put in new search, put in the author's code. Boom, and you can get all sorts of great information like the ASINs. You get a few things that are really not useful. Like if you are advertising Germany, having the German translation of the book is fantastic. If you're not, perhaps not so good. Um, but one thing by using a KDP Rocket that you miss out on are these wonderful things here like the series name and uh, the character names which I find to be pretty effective keywords and uh, a KDP rocket just kind of like glosses over those but grab as many keywords as possible you want a minimum of a thousand to start advertising so I'm gonna carry on going through until I have a thousand um, but the more the better and I'll show you why in my next video when I um, stop putting together the the first advertising campaign for my book so join me then and i will speak to you soon cheerio